Hello and welcome to the CX Files podcast for Thursday, the 22nd of September, 2022. My name is Mark Hillary and I'm in Sao Paulo, Brazil. And I'm Peter Ryan, usually in Montreal, but today, Mark, I'm in New York, not for the UN conference, but for a fraud and compliance conference that's happening tomorrow. Can't wait to find out some of the key learnings that we're going to take away from that event. But we're here to talk a little bit today about a different event that transpired last week in Las Vegas. Yeah, of course. Um, I know that uh, last week you were there in Vegas for the CXO. And um, I know that we've, we've got an interview with one of the participants from the conference. But but maybe before we jump to the interview with Ben Jones, uh, you could tell us something about, you know, what happened in Vegas, what were the highlights and, and maybe some of the learnings from the event. Well, Mark, as you know, as a participant in CX Outsourcers 2018 and 2019, before we had to put the event on pause, the whole concept of CX Outsourcers is to bring together outsourcing CX professionals from around the world to give them the strategic insight they need to find out how better to compete in the coming months and years. And the 2022 event was no exception in terms of quality mindshare and quality participants. You know, we counted up the countries that were represented. We had nearly two dozen different different locations where people were coming in from. And obviously there was a good number who were visiting from Canada and from the United States. We had a large number that came in from Latin America. We had participants from the Philippines, from India, from a West European standpoint, the United Kingdom had a number of different delegates. Uh, Mark, you'll be interested to know that uh, a country you're very interested in, in the form of Malta, had a speaker, Nadia Pace, was was uh, kind enough to join us from that country and gave a great presentation with Victor Doctor, who was in from Poland. So really, we had probably, I think, the biggest number of participants, whether it's sponsors, speakers, or delegates, that we've ever had. And I would say that in terms of the key learnings and the key takeaways, there were many of them the need to try and find and retain the best talent possible using the right techniques, the focus on data protection and fraud and making sure the compliance was rock solid, using different elements such as blockchain and a presentation that was given on blockchain that probably generated the most debate amongst all the participants was was fantastic. There was also a lot of discussion throughout the course of the event about new channels and new new media mediums that are going to need to be taken into consideration. Stephen Loin gave a presentation on the metaverse and the impact that CX professionals are going to need to think about, about the metaverse and how it's going to come to the forefront. You know, all of these were key elements that we brought up at CX Outsourcers over the course of a day and a half, ably chaired by Dan Hong, who acted as MC. And going into 2023, I believe that the participants, the delegates from the different outsourcing firms are going to be a much better position to compete effectively than they were prior to coming into CX outsourcers. Yeah, well, I think that, uh, you know, this industry is poised to do something um, regardless of what happens with the wider kind of macro economy, because, you know, if there is continued uncertainty, then I think we will look at a lot of companies seeking value and turning to this uh, these companies, you know, within the BPO community to help them try and find more value and efficiency. Um, but then alternatively, alternatively, if we start seeing more of a recovery in certain sectors, then people will be looking for innovation and what's the next wave of CX. So, you know, exactly. th- th- there's opportunities all around. Exactly. And, and this is what I think was so apropos about 2022. We weren't talking about the tried and tested industries. We weren't talking about the tried and tested technologies or locations where you can deliver from. There was talk about many cutting edge things. And we, we, we mentioned Steve and the metaverse. We talked a little bit about the blockchain presentation. But there were other elements, say, around emerging vertical markets and the discussion about how e-commerce can be the engine for outsourcers in regards to how people are buying online. There was discussion around fintech, around cryptocurrency. Mark, these are topics that we never would have heard of, as you know, at an event six, seven years ago. Now they're becoming table stakes. And one of the panels that I thought was most interesting that Ben will talk a little bit about in the interview I just conducted with him was the buyer's panel. So individuals who are responsible for pulling the decision from an enterprise CX perspective on whether or not to outsource, and if they do, who they're going to outsource with. And 
there were so many interesting takeaways, really almost the, the cherry on the cake in the form of here are individuals that are the the final this is where the buck stops with them and here's what they're telling the outsourcing community in terms of what they're looking for an encapsulation of what the buying community requires so so interesting and mark i know that you're probably very anxious to hear a little bit about 2023 and how the next event's going to look i can tell you that we are planning an event for 2023 i can tell you it will likely very likely be at the end of h1 of next year and what i i can't confirm locations yet that's coming in the coming weeks but i can confirm that it will be in the emea region so watch this space okay well that sounds great i'm certainly looking forward to uh I guess June, July next year, then we can all get together for for another episode of this. But why don't you just tee up the the interview with Ben then? So uh, so what what were the Absolutely. key takeaways from that, and then we can go straight into the interview. Well, Mark, as you know, Ben Jones is the chief commercial officer for Sigma Connected. He's based in the United Kingdom, and he made his uh, trek over from the UK to the western part of the United States. Not an easy trip, as I, I know many people listening will realize. It does take a long time on the plane, but he found it well worth it. Ben was coming in. It was his first time attending a CX Outsources event, and for the course of the interview that our listeners are going to hear in the next few minutes, I think they're going to take away the fact that there were some elements that were covered at the event that Ben was anticipating. There were a lot of light bulb moments that perhaps he hadn't been thinking about, but are certainly on his radar. But the key thing that came out of the interview for Ben, at least from my own takeaway, was he got a tremendous amount of value from the networking and the people who were in from around the world, relationships that he perhaps had renewed, new relationships that had started, and really the opportunity to... To, to come away knowing a great group of people that he's going you know, to potentially be able to work with in some way, shape or form moving forward. Okay, great. So why don't we go straight to that interview and hear from Ben Jones about his experience of CXO 2022. The CX Files is very lucky this week to be able to catch up with a very busy man in the form of Ben Jones, Chief Commercial Officer for Sigma Connected, who's based in Birmingham in the UK. Ben, great to have you here, but I know that most recently you and I were together in Las Vegas for CX Outsourcers 2022, which is what we're here to chat about. Absolutely, and it was a pleasure to see you as well as all the other attendees that were, were there. We were fortunate to have a a very productive and uh, flawless trip, which is which is always good to ensure everybody gets there and then gets home safely. But also, you know, the 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 product of and the output of the of the reason why we're there is 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 about you know bringing together um, thought leaders from around the world. Uh, a chance that we haven't had uh, been able to do for the last couple of years for for, for well known reasons, well documented reasons, but. No, great, great to see you all. Uh, we had a lovely time, some nice weather in Las Vegas, but most importantly, some really, really, really strong thought leadership. Well, we do appreciate the fact that you did take the time to make a very long trip, and I'm glad to hear that it was seamless. You know, kudos to the CX experts in the travel uh, sector in regards to getting you and many other people from the UK over. Ben, as it was the first time you've attended CX Outsourcers, I'd like to start the conversation by asking you, what were your expectations? What did you anticipate going into the meeting? And when you actually got there, how did those expectations get met or even potentially exceeded in terms of what you were anticipating? Yeah, good, good question. So um, I, so I, I think the I think how it unfolded was, was different to what my expectation was at, at, at the start in a, in a positive way. So um you know, whenever you go to a conference, you expect you, a fair share of selling and being sold to. Um, and, you know, that that can often dominate conferences to the detriment because, uh, you know, those that are selling uh, are just there to sell and those that are being sold to get a fatigue around constantly being sold to. So so I, I knew it would be slightly different given that it was a, a smaller group of people, given the attendee list. But I didn't quite know what to expect. And I was, you know, super pleasantly surprised at, um, at how free-flowing, how open, how kind of Chatham House rules it was. It, it, there was there was absolutely no 
hard sell. There, there was there were a bunch of very passionate people who were there to share, to share ideas, to share experiences, to share updates about what they've been doing. But most importantly, to bring to the table, you know, the the topics that are right up there in terms of you know prior, priority for, for for the world at the moment um and particularly for, for the us market so uh i i had a great time I, I i wrote i'm not a guy that writes a lot of stuff down i i filled up a book with with notes and um made some special contacts and connections and uh yeah it, it was well worth the trip from my perspective now, as we know, CX Outsourcers 2022 was focused heavily on not just what to anticipate this year, but going into 2023, what the BPO CX leadership community needs to be thinking about. For you, what were some of the two to three main takeaways that any outsourcing executive should be thinking about going into the coming year as they plan for the next 12 to 24 months? So, I mean, the overarching one for me is is that you know we work we, we operate and we live in a, in a, in a, in a in a market in a sector that's growing and and it's growing rapidly so you know global growth figures for the next five to seven years see the sector double double in size and and, and you know the us is is probably you know knocking on towards 50 percent of that of that market share so, so we're talking about some phenomenal growth around the globe and for me, you know, what I perhaps hadn't done before or taken the time to do, you know, we're all busy and we all get, you know, taken up with what's happening today or tomorrow rather than thinking too far in advance. But but the, the bit for me is about thinking about my responsibility as an outsourcer in solving or, or contributing to the good to some of the challenges that, that exist in the world, you know, out there today and and I'd never necessarily looked at it that way. If we think about job creation, if we think about the geography or the localization of that job creation, if we think about um, the opportunity to bring you know parts of the world closer together to to unite uh, companies and people and sectors and uh, to, to introduce people to uh, new communities and, and new languages and, and, and new um, New territories are, you know, all, all of that is real, but I never saw it necessarily as as part of my responsibility as a as, as a global outsourcer that we have a great opportunity to own and be part of a solution that fixes some very very important topics. I think that's really interesting because it's not something that I would have anticipated based on, say, the agenda or the planning going into the meeting. But it, it's outstanding what people can pull out and what can really hit home and resonate, which is, I think, great validation in terms of what the conference is looking to bring to the table. If I can ask you, what surprised you the most in terms of maybe the content that you heard from speakers or panels, was there anything that was a real light bulb moment that perhaps you found out about that you weren't expecting? Um, I mean, there, there were there was a, di a diverse nature of the topics that were of interest. So, so that's the first thing I'd say is that you know, uh, learning more about how blockchain and AI, uh, you know, may may support growth in in the outsourcing sector, um, you know, was something that I wasn't perhaps expecting to uh, to get into. I, I think the biggest light bulb moment for me was was about considering the journey and the transformation that CX is on in in our sector and um, some of the visionaries that that were starting to bring that to life in terms of you know how that how that might look in the future, you know, what, what's, what are the important topics of today and, and what are the status updates against those topics, but also where might things go in the, in the future? Uh, things that Stephanie Todd had to say, Stephen Lloyd had to say, and re it's really, really good, deep thought leadership that, that brought, you know, brought to the front of my mind about what is our strategy in Sigma in terms of, shaping our, our kind of transformational offering to the client you know it's 
I think long gone are the days where, you know, we, we promise to, to cut 10, 15% out of the cost stack and we'll do a bit of AI and we'll do a bit of process remapping and we'll save a few people here and a few people there. I don't think that's good enough anymore. I, I think we have to be a lot more visionary than that. And we have to be a lot more, um, uh, we have to drive that process a lot more in terms of bringing opportunity and options to the client. And that really got me thinking about, you know, where we stood in that and, and the work that we need to do to, to package up and to be able to think about how we can be different. And, um, you know, that, that really set a light bulb off that I immediately started talking to my exec team about um, back in the UK, which is, you know, we really have to invest some time, uh, some thinking time, but also, uh, you know, we, we need to kind of fund the development of that concept of what do we bring to the table? What do we bring to the table that's different? And how does that benefit the client? You know, what what journey are we taking them on? Um, and, you know, what does that look like in the future? Um, so, you know, that all, all of those topics which brought together some great debate around the old world and the new world. And what I mean by that is that, um, you know, the old world is, 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 is a human touched kind of journey, right? So, uh, and we talked about how certainly for the near future, that, that there's a necessity, that there's a need to still have that human touch. And um, particularly in times of global crisis, people more than ever want to speak to somebody else and have that reassurance that, um, you know, that emotional and empathetic kind of touch that, that um, you know, helps you understand and, and helps you, you, you know, kind of contemplate your situation. But at the same time, you have to pair that off with technology. You have to pair that off with, uh, it, you know, some of the developments that are coming through in, in you know, fascinating stuff around blockchain, around AI, around the, the metaverse. I mean, you know, I, what Stephen was telling us about the metaverse, I hadn't even really thought about that. It's not something yeah. that, you know, I, I spend my day thinking about. So to take a step back and to really just kind of think, wow, what does this mean for us? And what does it mean in terms of, you know, how we can develop as individuals, as people, but as a business um, was really powerful. Okay. And, you know, it's interesting you mention it. Because that's not just one light bulb moment. That's like enough light bulb moments to power up one of the hotel marquees in Las Vegas. <laughs> Let's be perfectly frank. So my 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 final question for you, Ben, would be related to the last session that we had at CX Outsourcers. And you'll remember that was the buyers panel, the leaders from enterprise CX departments. And we had several of them who were there from Canada, from the USA, and from the UK. Now, to me... While I enjoyed every single session that we had, that was probably the most powerful one. The the people that are actually responsible for procuring the services from BPOs. Now, as somebody who leads a commercial team, as somebody who sells to the enterprise community, what did you see as the main takeaway that the enterprise leaders were saying in terms of how they would like to have outsourced services positioned to them as buyers? Great question, and, and firstly, you know, let me let me say how much I enjoyed that. Uh, it kind of brought the whole two days together. But um, you know, the, 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 I couldn't write fast enough in that session. The, the, the value of what was coming out from people was was immense, and uh, uh, we you even managed to get one additional guest speaker on there who uh, who wasn't uh, intending to be there, wasn't he? And, and, and he had some great things to say. Um, amazing, amazing. I I, I think the so for me, what came across from everyone was about relationship. And, and I know that's a very easy thing to say and we'd all kind of go, yeah, you know, relationship needs to be there. But um, people buy from people and, you know, people want to buy from somebody that they can trust. And in order to trust somebody, you've got, there's got to be a, a degree of openness and honesty in that transaction. And, you know, what really came across from everyone and all of their experiences is that, you know, they want to work with other businesses that are um, passionate, that are honest, that uh, are very open and, and uh, are able to, you know, take part in, in real time in, in you know, understanding 
clients' challenges of today and shaping those into uh, into recommendations, opportunities for the for the future. And and you know the 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 fact that it doesn't matter where in the world you're transacting, you still need the same thing. So you need to know that what you're getting promised is going to get delivered. You need to have confidence in in that you know, in what you've been sold. And therefore, you know, in the process of, of, of selling, in, in that procurement process, how you bring that to life, how you bring the case studies from your organisation to life in a way that really builds that integrity, that, that authenticity, if you like, of, of who you are as a business, really kind of came across, you know, it's it's all too easy to talk about you know being different and uh, you know delivering quality and you might not be the cheapest but you get a better result you know all those things are quite tired in terms of commentary and um, you know the, the 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 panel suggested that you know they don't want to hear those things they they want to get they want to be able to connect with with a with an individual. And with an organisation, they want to understand the values and understand the culture. They want to be able to feel comfortable that you are going to look after their brand, and and that, and that was the overarching, but you know, feeling of of what buys, you know, what what sells, and, and what the buyer wants to buy. So, um, you know, none of that is 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 new news, but but when you bring all of those things together, and then you you reflect on your pitch as a, as a, as a BPO um, and how you come across, then, you know, it really, really channels your thinking to make sure that you're getting that, you're getting that right. And, and you're giving the buyer everything that they want to get from you and you have confidence in your ability to deliver and they believe you. And, that, and that's, that's the important part of the transaction. Well, Ben, this has been a great discussion. Thanks for the recap on CX outsourcers. And I know I said that the previous question was the last one, but this will be the last one. From the standpoint of the non-work stuff, what was your highlight of Las Vegas? Wow. Uh, what was my highlight of Las Vegas? Um, I mean, it's, it's a city I love. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a place that I, I'm also pleased to leave <laughs> whenever I do. It's quite tiring. Um, uh, listen, I, I, I think, you know, we, the time was made special by the people that were there and the fact that we, you know, we, we could go out in the evening, we could go and grab some food, you know, if, if a few kind of people went off in different directions later on, but, you know, maybe came back together again. That, that whole, you know, Vegas is great for that because there's always something to do for everybody. Um, and, it, and it's it's not formal, it's quite informal, and it means that you know you can go and grab a drink or you go grab a pizza, and um, you know that that's a great way to socialise and, and to build relationships. So for me, you know, great venue. Uh, I, th I thought Meet LV was was uh, was perfect. It was within walking distance of you know pretty much everybody's accommodation. Uh, everybody was staying in in you know uh, quite a defined area in downtown, which was great. Um, and then people people were meeting up socially afterwards. So bringing all that together, I, I think was was great. And uh, I just probably need to stay away from the roulette table next time because that's my uh, Achilles heel. Well, as long as you know it's your Achilles heel, that's the important <laughs> thing. But I, I'm glad you had, I'm glad you had a good time, Ben. Thank you very much. It's great to connect on the CX files, and we look forward to talking to you soon. Awesome. Thanks, Peter. Take care. Thanks for listening to the CX Files podcast. We really appreciate your feedback and suggestions. You can reach myself, Mark Hillary, or Peter Ryan via LinkedIn. Please also leave a rating or review on your favorite podcast provider, as that helps more people to find us. As always, we'd like to thank Chris Haig at Traction Media for the CX Files graphics. See you next week. Awesome.